So welcome everyone, it's so great to see you guys all here tonight and welcome you to the first ever academic gala evening. We are the Prefect Academic Enrichment Committee and we've been working over the past few months to get this event off the ground. So this evening really is our little child and we're so excited to be sharing the next few hours with you and to welcome you to the evening. Really, Glastonbury's got nothing on what we've got in store for you tonight. You know, there's sports galas and there's music galas and CCF galas, but we haven't had an academic gala yet. And we just thought, well, you know, why not create it ourselves? I'm now delighted to welcome Jamie to the stage. Because it doesn't feel like it was that long ago that I was a student here. Uh, so I wondered how I could possibly provide you guys with the insight that you need. I wasn't, to be perfectly honest, that engaged uh, during my GCSEs. From an academic standpoint, I didn't find it particularly engaging. I thought there was a lot of emphasis on just remembering things. Uh, weren't able to necessarily explore issues in the sort of depth that I was wanting to go. And that meant I got pretty poor GCSE results, probably in at least the bottom 50% of the year. And at the time, I didn't even find that particularly depressing or upsetting or crushing because I simply wasn't particularly interested. Now that completely changed for me at A-levels. I felt I went from simply remembering things to engaging with conflicting ideas and engaging in debate with my classmates. And that transformation got me uh, far more interested. It enabled me to go to Nottingham University, a university that would have probably, you know, wouldn't have looked on the cards if you just looked at my GCSE results. So the, the crucial thing for me is I was building my profile over time. I was continuing that engagement. And it was only at 21 that I was in a realistic position to start applying to some of those top places. Now, I was fortunate enough to go to Oxford and MIT and, and, and do the work experience, as Orlando mentioned. But the reason I talk about that journey isn't because I think it's particularly interesting, but I think it just highlights the importance of taking that long-term view on your future. The sort of universities and job roles I could apply to changed radically over time. And that was because I remained engaged and committed in those academic pursuits. So one of the main things I've learned so far is to never write yourself off. We're always changing and developing. And for everyone in this room, we're gonna hit peaks and troughs at different points in our lives. Um, we might mature earlier or later. And you know that can be incredibly decisive at the time. But if we take that longer view, uh, things can change significantly. So I think you should all be incredibly excited. You should embrace that just the sheer number of chances and opportunities that you have coming up in the next 10 years. So if I could leave you with one final thought, is that you should never underestimate the agency you have to design your own career and your own academic future. Thank you very much. I'd just like to start with a fairly provocative question. I wonder how many of you have ever questioned why we go to school. It's a way of giving universities and employers a measure of our ability. But I think there is much more to school than merely walking away at the end of year 13 with a piece of paper with a few numbers and letters on it. If that's all you get, what a waste of 14 years of education. Because in an increasingly competitive job market and a universities market, which uh, some of us have found out today, um, it's not just your grades that determine where you will be and the, the sort of job you're going to get. It's the concrete, soft skills that you learn in schools which determines the measure of success you have. Aren't we meant to be at the academic gala evening? Are we in a parallel universe here? I think we're just on the other side of the curtain. Oh, right, OK. Let's go through then. In 1935, Owen Schrodinger was casually writing to his good friend Albert Einstein when he hypothesised a thought experiment. It's now dubbed Schrodinger's cat in a box. Well, in this case, the cat is neither dead nor alive. It's what we call a superposition of states. It's both dead and alive at the same time. And that macroscopic particles don't follow the same rules that electrons do, which are quantum particles. Macroscopic particles like this. Oh my God, Ben, <laughs> what was that for? Shush, Fred, back to the talk, please. You're interrupting. So which of these is a true reality? Is it the cat which we see as dead, or the cat which we know is both alive and dead? There are certain things that humans cannot physically do, 
So why can't there be things that humans can't mentally understand? Anyway, uh, we hope you enjoyed our talk and, uh, and learned something. And you know, if you didn't, then tough, because there is uh, an alternate reality version of yourself that, that did enjoy our talk and did learn something. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Considering the whole kind of theme of the evening was more academic, it was really nice to see it as a very social kind of environment. The next few talks are going to be from some Year 10 students who are all part of the new Learning Pathways programme and this is actually the first year running this year. The HBQ also gives me the opportunity to try something new that I've really wanted to do in football journalism. This involves writing match reports, doing player ratings, but also learning how to write not just facts and statistics, but what makes the reader feel like they're at the match. So I'm questioning whether it's actually fair, because if the loser of the popular vote, like Donald Trump, can lose by three million votes, and still become president, even though the other candidate in 2016, Hillary Clinton, won more votes than him, can lose, calling the outcome just an anomaly of the system and the fact that it was never meant to happen. Then in fact, the system must be a little messed up and it's overall not fit for purpose. Regarding to the lockdown research, I found that the demand for cosmetic dentistry has increased rapidly due to the effect of looking into your reflecting camera on Zoom. So confidence in people's smiles is not only wanted, however needed to. Well, microplastics are so ubiquitous, they have even been found in bottled water. In the ocean, marine organisms of all sizes, from whales to oysters to plankton, consume microplastics thinking they are food. Research suggests that an average human consumes around five grams of plastic per week. While sometimes the immense environmental problems facing our generation can seem overwhelming, this is equally a catalyst for creative thinking and novel engineering approaches. As I said before, a massive well done to all our speakers tonight. And I hope this is the first of many gala evenings to come. I'm looking at you, Year 12, to pick up the baton next year and continue this tradition. Tonight was not only a celebration of learning, but it was also a celebration of leadership. It was fantastic that the Prefect Committee organised and masterminded the entire event. Uh, getting in an external speaker, who's an old Berkhamsteadian, uh, inspiring uh, the younger students in the school to come and speak uh, in front of their peers and, and those who are older than them as well. So this was not only a celebration of academic excellence, but it was also a celebration of what uh, young people can do and achieve.